The Regal Cinema was built by a man called Morris Prince, uh, who worked his way up in the cinema industry. He was started as a young man in Bristol, I believe. Uh, he ended his days in 1991, living at Ashford, and he'd sold the Regal Cinema by then. He also built the Strand Cinema in Biddeford, so the two of them were his little empire. And indeed, that's where I must have first gone to the cinema, probably just before the outbreak of war, when I was, what, five years old. My dad used to have charge of me occasionally, and he knew Mr. Prince, and he would go into the Bell Hotel, which was right next door. That was my dad's favourite port of call. And he would dump me in the cinema, and Mr. Prince would put me up in the circle somewhere and leave me. And my story that I've often told is, um, I've never checked up, I ought to be able to check up, but two films I remember particularly seeing when I was roughly that age. One was um, a sort of spy thriller, I think, and it, Conrad Veet, who was a German emigre film star at that time, played a dual role. He was identical twin brothers. One was good and one was bad. It was a corny old story, I'm sure. I don't know what it was called, but it shouldn't be too difficult to find out. And the other was, must have been based on Agatha Christie, I think, because it was about a, what we today call a serial killer who was going round a small town like Ponsible, perhaps, knocking off people right, left and centre. And of course, the detective, I don't know if it was Monsieur Poirot or Miss Marple, couldn't work out what all these people had in common, why they were victims, why they were targets of this man. And all I can remember is the answer at the end of the film was that they'd all served on the same jury. <laughs> And this was a man who'd been sent down and was wreaking his revenge on the members of the jury that had falsely convicted him and sent him to prison or whatever. But it was a fairly horrifying film for a five-year-old. And I think I, I had nightmares the following night. And my mum was not well pleased with my dad. Only a fortnight ago when I was in London, I picked up this package of old theatre programmes. It cost me ten pounds, which I thought was rather a lot, actually, because I don't think in London anybody else would have been slightly interested in um, the John Gay Theatre in Newport Road. But I can remember going there again every week, I think. We went to the theatre just across the road from where I lived at that time in Trafalgar Lawn. And uh, I can even remember the names of some of the it was a repertory company, Frances Lovering. She was the sort of Maggie Smith of, of, of that particular company, the Grand Dame. So all these programmes are dating from 1951. That's quite advanced for Barnstable. Streetcar Named Desire by Tennessee Williams. And I think they probably belonged to a man called Jimmy Gardner who I don't remember. Uh, I remember her, I remember him. Robert Courtney was the son of Courtney's, was a menswear, I think, in Barnstable, and he must have been the son. Elwyn Evans, the two of them together, ran this theatre company. I think he must have been, must have been Welsh with a name like that, must be Elwyn Evans, and he played Stanley Kowalski. That amazes me, actually, because my recollection of Elwyn Evans is he was rather sort of a feat, <laughs> whereas that's the Marlon Brando part. <laughs> so I don't think he would have been typecast for that. But we used to sit regularly in the third or fourth row, <laughs> and... Uh, Typically, as soon as the curtains went back, because they all used to do their own scenery and everything, you know, apart from acting in it, they would do all the backstage work as well. The audience would immediately applaud. They would be, we'd be applauding the scenery for that week's production. And that was automatic. Every week, as soon as the curtains went up, there would be a round of applause for the scenery. Uh, and I can remember going to many of these plays because they were so typical of the period. Noel Coward and Terence Rattigan and Charlie Zant was a perennial war horse. Do you know Charlie Zant? Which has, has a bit of drag in it. So.